Hey guys how are all of you beautiful people? Hope all of you are doing great this is in Marvel I am God. Were Endless Trans migrated the timeline of Wolverine 3 and became the last mutant of the old era. At the moment, the X-Men have long since disbanded, mutant is no longer brilliant, Wolverine is entering old age, and the entire race is in peril. Fortunately, he found that when he watched battles he could obtain the opponent's abilities. So let's start this story, relax and enjoy. Battle detected, drop reward, psychic ability, Professor X. Endless listened to the cold voice echoing in his head, and his eyes suddenly showed joy. His purpose in following Wolverine and his party was to gain the ability of the Professor's mind. Definitely also wants to help Wolverine change his fate, but he understands that only if he is strong enough to survive in the dangerous Marvel Universe. Immediately, Endless felt as if a clear stream was pouring into his mind, and his consciousness was clearer than ever. Moment. His heart enveloped the hearts of everyone around him, and negative emotions from countless people also poured in. Pain, fear. All of them stemmed from the truest reaction in his heart at this moment, and similar negative emotions instantly poured into Endless's mind, making him frown. If others estimated that they would have collapsed on the spot, Endless strong willpower made him endure it. Subsequently, he deeply absorbed his mind and gradually became familiar with the use of mental ability, and the fluctuations around him gradually returned to normal. The noise of negative emotions in the ears dissipated, and everything returned to calm. Boy, keep up. At this time, Logan's low roar shout was heard from the front, pulling Endless thoughts back to reality. When Endless heard this, he saw Wolverine standing in front of him with a painful expression, his face was red, and he tried his best to tremble, we have to help the professor, otherwise that tragedy will repeat itself. This is not a lie, there have been lessons before. The professor's ability directly led to the death of hundreds of people, including the main members of X-Men, which has since announced its disbandment. Xavier Academy and Mutant are also seen as dangerous existences. Charles is listed as a weapon of mass destruction by the Conquest and is considered a heavy wanted criminal by the government. And the professor's body will also be harmed as a result. Endless turned his mind solemnly and quickly kept up with Wolverine's pace, but he deliberately kept a step slower than Wolverine. Because he had just thought that he might be able to appease the other party by entering the Professor's God's telekinesis through the psychic ability, which the Professor used in Doctor Strange 3 to try to awaken the soul controlled by Wanda. Thinking about it, a flash of determination flashed in his eyes, and he raised his left hand and placed one finger on his temple. Raw. Next second. Endless thinking gradually enveloped the entire hotel, and everything around him began to become transparent, and 360 degrees appeared in his mind without dead ends. Everyone's hearts were covered by him, and more and more voices echoed in Endless's head. Soon Charles' location was quickly locked, and through the professor's field of vision, he saw that several people from the Genetic Research Institute were about to leave the professor downstairs. Fortunately, due to the professor's mental fluctuations, they froze in place, leaving only their eyes to roll slightly. And the petite Laura struggled to prod herself on the floor, her immature face was unusually hideous and she fell to the ground wailing in pain. In order to resolve this crisis as soon as possible, Endless took a deep breath and closed his eyes, completely immersed in the spiritual world. The immediate mobilization of thoughts forcibly invaded the professor's mind. Airplanes. Next second. In front of his closed eyes, a white world came into view. This is Charles in a world, and the moment he arrives here, endless negative emotions sweep through. 
Suddenly, Endless's heart also surged with a sense of helplessness. Ah! A faint wail came from a distance, diverting his attention. Turn your head and look. I saw that Charles in the thinking world was kneeling to the ground, his face was extremely distorted, and his expression was even more painful. And that wail came from his mouth. Charles' mind kept flashing through the unbearable past, making countless emotions continue to accumulate self-blame, guilt, regret. All kinds of negativity trapped him here, unable to return to reality at all. Professor. Charles. Seeing this, Endless hurriedly stepped forward and called softly, but the other party always knelt on the ground and did not give any response. He looked at the situation in front of him, the situation in the outside world was still turbulent, and he knew very well that he could not tolerate the slightest hesitation. Professor, wake up quickly. Endless put his hand on Charles' head, and his fingertips seemed to touch the space with magic. Constantly twitching the professor's nerves. Although the ability of his mind is far less pure than Charles, the other party is now a helpless child and has no way to control himself. Soon. Next second. Charles in the room suddenly came to his senses, gasped and his chest rose and fell violently, feeling dazed and shocked by his situation. Because his consciousness just now was extremely confused, he didn't know what was going on in the world of thought. He also knows very well how dangerous it is to fall into a state of loss of control, and it is almost an incredible thing to be able to wake up naturally. Or rather, it's a simply impossible thing. This has never happened before. As the psychic fluctuations suddenly stopped, the affected people were relieved, they did not understand what caused all this, and only felt that they were only one step away from death. At the moment, Logan, who was in the corridor, was relieved and surprised that the spiritual fluctuations had disappeared, but he didn't have time to catch his breath, so he raised his leg and slammed open the empty door and rushed inside. Ah! Logan's roar attracted the attention of all the special agents, who were blue in the face and obviously had not yet recovered from the previous psychic fluctuations. Taking advantage of this gap, Logan stretched out his steel claws and directly set off a bloody storm. Within a few moments, several corpses had fallen in the room. Only then did Logan slump weakly, finally getting time to breathe, and looked at the potions scattered on the ground, apparently showing no signs of being injected. No injections. How will it return to normal? Logan looked at the equally weak professor and licked his dry lips and asked. I don't know. Charles shook his head hard, his face was full of blankness, and looked at Endless who had just entered the room, always feeling that the other party's body exuded a particularly familiar aura. Professor, are you all right? Endless noticed the sight, raised his head and said doubtfully. Although Logan's heart is also puzzled, it is imperative to get out of this dangerous place. We have to go. Logan stood up with one hand, knowing that the people from the Gene Institute would definitely come again, and he had to leave this place quickly. Thereupon, the group crossed a path that was not monitored by the Institute, and finally got into a truck and set foot again as fast as possible. On the vast and shadowless desert, the sun is extremely dazzling, drying the land into a dry place. A large pickup truck of wind and dust servants sped down the road, leaving two faint car marks on the ground, and the dust and fog pooled out a long distance behind the car. Endless sat in the driver's seat, bored holding the steering wheel, and driving long distances made him feel extremely monotonous. In order to escape the pursuit of the AKLI Institute of Genetic Change, they had to rush to Canada as soon as possible. Laura and Charles in the back seat fell asleep deeply, 
while Logan looked at the video on Galarov's phone, his brows furrowed even more. In the picture, countless young children are dragged into a small room as genetic experiments and forcibly euthanized. Although he had heard Conard say this before he died, he was extremely angry after witnessing it. Raw. We headed in the direction of Canada, avoiding the Genetic Research Institute, and by the way to get Laura to her destination. Logan let out a long sigh of relief, looked at the sleeping Laura through the rearview mirror, and said to Endless on the side. Endless nodded, he currently had no new ideas. Time passed, the sun gradually set in the west, the sky closed the last sunset, and the night shrouded the desert. The moonlight illuminates the sand white, the stars in the sky are emitting their own faint light, and everything around makes people feel peaceful and comfortable. Unless. This is on the way to escape. At the moment after a day of galloping, Endless and his party were far away from the crowds, and they could see a gas station at a long distance. Even so, Logan refused to let down his vigilance staring out the car window into the darkness as if trying to see through it. Stop ahead, let's take turns. Logan withdrew his gaze and said to Endless on the side. He was worried that the people from the Genetic Research Institute would catch up and planned to rush overnight tonight. Okay. Endless was slightly stunned, and simply replied, feeling a little helpless. It seems that there is no way to go to Gotham City in DC tonight. I originally wanted to use the newly obtained psychic ability to find Clark's whereabouts, but now I have to give up. But now there's Bruce. If Wayne helps over there, it should have results soon. Meanwhile, Gotham City is also shrouded in deep darkness, the city is illuminated under the clouds and in those places where dirt is hidden, emotions called madness begin to spread. On top of a tall building large enough to overlook most of the city, two figures meet here. One of them is Batman, dressed in this black battle suit, and the cloak behind him sways with the cool evening breeze. And the person standing across from him was Detective Gordon. The current Gordon is still only a police detective and has not become the future commissioner. Batman, who did that thing last night? Gordon's face was solemn, frowning and looking at the black shadow in front of him, and his tone also showed a little doubt. It's not me, it's someone else. After sensing the other party's suspicions, Batman answered lightly through the deep voice of the voice changer but did not confess Endless' existence. You know him, I found your flying darts on the scene, with the blood of those gangsters on it. Gordon talked about his discovery, convinced that the man, if not Batman, must have a great connection to him, and that this was the only clue he had now. And then what? Hearing this, Batman's expression remained unchanged but there were more complicated emotions in his eyes when he looked at Gordon. You should be glad I disposed of it for you, otherwise today's Gotham headline is Batman Bloodbath Gang. That being said, Gordon admired the mysterious man's approach and continued to himself, sometimes, if you really want to scare the scum of Gotham, leaving some corpses will help. When Batman heard this, he just kept his own silence, but his firm gaze showed his inner attitude. He didn't want to kill, he didn't want to fall into the abyss, thinking that this kind of thing was only the first time and countless times. As you gaze into the abyss, the abyss is also gazing back. Looking directly into the darkness, Batman understands very well that once people's hands are contaminated with human life, they will have a disregard for life, and this mentality is very terrible. More importantly, he believes that everyone has a family, and if one member dies, it can cause catastrophic damage to the entire family and indelible harm to the remaining members. He has experienced this kind of thing, so he doesn't want this kind of tragedy to happen to him. 
although Batman did not stop endless radical practices before, and later reached a cooperative relationship with him, it does not mean that he agrees with the other party. If you want to check, then go ahead. Hearing this, Gordon retracted his thoughts and swept his gaze in the direction where the voice came from, but where was Batman's figure in place? The other party always likes to hide in the night like this. After this conversation, Batman left the rooftop and wandered through the dirty alleys, looking for tonight's target, while waiting for the mysterious Endless to appear. At the same time, the police department also began to act, following Batman's actions to maintain the security of the entire Gotham. Time flew by in a hurry, and within a few hours, countless criminals were brought to justice. Batman had just finished fighting a criminal's den, and he couldn't wait for Endless to appear until this time, but thinking that the other party was even stranger than himself, he drove the Batmobile to end tonight's operation. Wayne Manor The silence in the hall was shattered by a sound of footsteps. Back home, Bruce removed the equipment on his body one by one, and finally took off the entire battle suit and his tense nerves were relieved. Bruce poured himself a glass of whiskey, took a sip and lay down on the couch, ready for a short break. Young master. It didn't take long for a light call to come from not far away, making Bruce open his eyes. This is the person you are looking for, called Clark Kent in the metropolis, there are thousands of them in total. The man came by Alfred, the butler who was holding several thick documents in his hand and handing them to Bruce. I see. After Bruce answered, he reached out and took the file, and couldn't help but wonder what kind of person Endless was looking for. In the hall, the crystal lamps hanging from the ceiling glow faintly, reflecting the entire room low and dim. After Bruce took over Alfred's file, the two fell silent only the rustling of flipping through the paper. These people are too ordinary. Bruce flipped through more than half of the file, his brows furrowing tightly. These people were too ordinary for him to be the target Endless would be looking for. Young master, these people's files will be relatively excellent. Seeing this, Alfred, who was guarding the side, reminded softly and took out the stack of materials at the bottom of the pile of files. These files are specially classified. Bruce nodded when he heard this, took it and continued to flip through it. However, after some searching, he still failed to find anything special about these people, and the best resume was a high-achieving student of the metropolis. Even that wasn't worth endless sex change for the murderer's clues. In his opinion, collecting this information is much simpler than learning the truth about the death of his parents. Even worth less than a million USD. However, the yellow-skinned boy revealed strangeness everywhere, and it was impossible to figure out his intentions, and after thinking about it, Bruce had to put the file aside. Now that the information has been collected, it only needs to be exchanged for intelligence and other things have nothing to do with you. Young master, why did you suddenly collect this information? At this time, Alfred said doubtfully from the side. A friend needs it. Bruce replied briefly, without revealing his transactional relationship with Endless. Although he could feel that Endless had no ill will towards him, he still felt that the other party was a very dangerous person, and if he did not have very important clues, there would not be this cooperation. Is it the man who killed more than two dozen people last night? As the butler of the Wayne family, Alfred is experienced and thoughtful, and he has broken through what his young master has not said. When Bruce heard this, he did not open his mouth to answer, acquiescing to Alfred's statement. Young master, give up this job don't live in hatred and the past. Seeing this, Alfred said worriedly that such a thing as a vigilante was too dangerous, 
and he was worried that Bruce would die at the hands of some murderer one night. I will immediately know the whereabouts of that scum in the alley. Bruce's face suddenly sank, and his tone became gloomy. As long as there is a glimmer of hope, he is not willing to give up. Even if a road goes to the dark, there will be no remorse, and from what happened in the alley that day was doomed to his life. Maybe it's just a waste of time. Alfred shook his head slightly, his tone showing strong regret. I'll prove it to you. When the young Bruce Wayne heard this, he dropped a word in emotion, got up and went back to his room with a calm face. Alfred was left alone, standing in the deserted hall. Marvel World At the moment time came the next afternoon, Endless and his party left the desert full of yellow sand, and the one-man tall grain on both sides of the road was everywhere. Fully automated. Driverless trucks are speeding down the roads, and trucks have long been labor-free. Endless has been in the desert for more than a month, and now he is in a much better mood to see the scene around him, and his fingers are tapping rhythmically on the steering wheel. Sitting in the back seat, Laura cast a curious glance out the window, it was a carriage, and through the gap between the guardrails, the foal inside could be seen. Charles smiled kindly when he saw this, and only a child could observe the world with the purest eyes. Damn it. At this moment, a truck suddenly changed its route, breaking the warm atmosphere. Endless saw that he was about to hit it, and he slammed the steering wheel to avoid a car accident and turned around. Perhaps he, Wolverine and Laura, with their strong self-healing ability, reacted quickly enough to avoid the oncoming truck. However, the vehicle still rushed uncontrollably into the green space next to the road, raising the road dust and fog. When will these guys grow their eyes? After a bump, Logan steadied himself, turned his head to glare at the moving truck, and cursed angrily. Logan, they are artificial intelligence, there is no consciousness. At the same time, the carriage was also affected by the truck, rushed straight into the green space on the other side, and finally stopped after a sharp brake sound. But the gate of the carriage was loosened by this jolt, and a frightened foal rushed directly off the car and hissed onto the road. The farmer noticed the abnormality and hurriedly pushed the door to get out of the car, and the rest of the people in the car also got out of the car. It's just that the frightened foal scurries around, and there is no way to control it all. We need to help them. Charles looked at the chaotic scene and frowned worriedly. No, we have to hurry, someone will come to help. Logan just glanced at it, then withdrew his gaze and motioned for Endless to continue on his way. Isn't it us? Words fall. Charles closed his eyes slightly releasing his mind ability to appease the frightened foals. Under his appeasement, the foals settled down at great speed, but even just standing on the road would affect the passing vehicles. Endless and Logan were helpless when they saw this, so they had to listen to the professor's way to get out of the car to bring back the frightened foal. With the help of the two, the foals quickly returned to the carriage. Thank you so much. The farmer wiped a handful of cold sweat from his forehead, thanked Endless and the two, and warmly invited, I don't know how to express my gratitude, can I invite you to dinner? Logan looked at the smile on the other person's face, a little overwhelmed and hesitated in place. Okay. Endless on the side agreed for him, after all, driving for so long does need to find a place to rest. Moreover. You can also find an opportunity to go to DC Gotham. Wolverine saw that Endless had agreed, and the professor also wanted to have dinner, so he had to nod his head in agreement. Night falls, and the moonless firmament is full of stars. Endless and his party followed the farmer to the latter's residence, named Will, whose ancestors ran farms in the south. Not long ago, 
he had built the classic southern double story in the middle of a cornfield. Being in the middle of a cornfield, the surroundings are immersed in silence. The Will family were welcoming and dinner was prepared quickly. Under the orange light, the food on the table is dyed with a warm color. For the first time, with so many people, Laura, who was dining around the table, had no scruples and directly reached out to grab the food in front of her. With this, Endless smiled wordlessly, pulled Laura's hand back, and shoved a fork into it. Laura gave him an unhappy look and continued to eat with her head down. Next to him, Charles had a good conversation with the farmer, and Logan joked about their old days at the Xavier Genius Academy in a rare relaxed atmosphere. Endless stopped talking, thinking about the matter of DC Gotham Bank. End of dinner. It was also close to midnight. The farmer's family, seeing that it was late at night, warmly opened their mouth to stay overnight. Considering that there were pursuers behind, Logan was about to open his mouth to refuse, but he heard the angry scolding of the farmer's son Nate. Oh my god. Damn it. Here it is again. Everyone seeks prestige. I saw Nate punch angrily, unscrew the valve but did not move the faucet. Logan and several people were confused about his performance, but looked back to find that Will, who had been showing enthusiasm, at the moment, also had an unexpectedly gloomy expression on his face. Fuck. It must be that group of bitches who moved their hands and feet on the water supply pump again. Will opened his mouth to curse, his brow furrowed deeply. Someone did something. Charles wondered. Laura didn't pay much attention and sat in her chair a little sleepily. Endless knows why. All the surrounding land has been acquired by the Canwood Beverage Company, except for the Will family, who stick to their ancestral land and refuse to make the slightest concession. So they've spent most of their recent days tormented by wood beverages. Breaking the pump and cutting off the water supply is just one of the methods of torture. No, I have to deal with it, there are guests, you can't even have water for bathing. Will took a deep breath, stood up and walked out the door. I'll go with you, maybe I can get a handle. Logan felt that Will was warm and had to do some help, so he chose to follow. I stayed to take care of Dr. and Laura. Endless considered that the people from the GMO Research Institute were very likely to come to the door and did not choose to go together. Logan knew what Endless was thinking, didn't say much, just turned around and gave a word, and went out with Will. The three Endless who remained were arranged by the farm hostess, Catherine, in the guest room upstairs. Time passes slowly. After days of near non-stop rushing, before Logan and the farmer could deal with the water supply, the tired Charles and Laura soon fell asleep in bed. Sorry. Please forgive me. Charles, who was sleeping, seemed to dream of the past, and muttered some apologetic words in his mouth. The sound was not loud, but it woke Laura lying on the small bed next to her. She quickly opened her eyes, her body instinctively tensed looked at the surrounding environment, not the cold white room, and quickly relaxed. Then his eyes inadvertently fell on Endless. Endless did not sleep and sat by the window, looking at the scene outside the window with a slightly solemn expression. He knew that people from the GMO Institute would most likely come to him, so he needed to be vigilant to avoid the tragedy of Charles' brutal murder. Sensing Laura's doubtful gaze, Endless looked back, pulled the corners of his mouth, just wanted to smile, and the next moment, his expression froze. Heavy footsteps were heard outside the door. Endless' five senses are beyond ordinary people, he can hear that the other party is deliberately controlling his steps, and besides, the farmer and Logan who drove away have not returned yet. Seemingly. 
The comma is not good. Click. The door was pushed open. Laura looked at the person standing at the door, her little head stunned. Because the person standing at the door is no different from Logan in terms of size and appearance, but he looks younger. Laura's slightly narrowed eyes revealed doubt, and she smelled a strange breath. Then, Endless got up and walked out in front of Charles, staring at him with a solemn face, in front of him was exactly the same guy as the young Wolverine, not Wolverine. It's a clone of Wolverine. X-24. With all the variants of Wolverine ability. In the movie, it is also because of the other party's extremely confusing appearance that he easily approaches Charles and then kills the other party. Bang. The moment X-24 saw Endless get up, his cold eyes flashed a dark light, and his feet suddenly stomped on the ground, like a bloodthirsty lone wolf turned into an afterimage. Wrapped in the strong wind, he pounced towards the yellow-skinned boy. Meanwhile, the outside of the farm has been shrouded in thick night, and there are many cars parked on the path, all with the sign of the Genetic Research Institute. In the center of the convoy, in a special jeep, the newly appointed head of security at the institute is staring at the room where Endless and others are. There was a hint of worry in his eyes, not because he was worried that the X-24 mission would fail, but because he was worried that the other party would lose control. After all, if they want to euthanize the subjects, there is basically only one reason, that is, the subjects have autonomous consciousness and thus disobey their orders. The X-24 won't lose control, will it? He wiped the sweat from his forehead and couldn't help but ask. After all, they would euthanize the experimental subjects they created in batches because those subjects lost control and gave birth to self-awareness. Losing control, giving birth to self-awareness, and moving freely mutant, will cause immeasurable trouble. Don't worry. Dr. Rice beside him, looking at the former's reaction, had a confident smile on the corner of his mouth. X-24 is the most perfect experimental subject, and has never been out of control. X-24, this is my most confident work, there can be no way to get out of control. Dr. Rice leaned back into the seat behind him and looked at the detached villa not far away, a confident smile on his lips. Since you can say so, then I am relieved. The scene caused by the loss of control of the experimental subject, I still have lingering palpitations when I think about it now. The person in charge of security said, and his body shook unconsciously. Just as the two were talking, the door of the single-family villa was pushed open, and a figure exuding a dangerous aura came out and slowly approached the location of the vehicle. It's the X-24. The Laura he was holding in his hand had lost consciousness, like a little rag doll, and her limbs hung down weakly. Ha ha ha, what do I say, the most confident work. Only after such a while, in a few words, the task has been completed. Seeing this, Dr. Rice got out of the car with a satisfied smile. At the moment X-24 was already in front of the vehicle standing expressionless. Dr. Rice walked around him, his eyes looking X-24 up and down, his expression becoming more and more satisfied. Good job. He praised, and the person in charge of security behind him also got out of the car at this time, and the nervous expression on his face still did not completely dissipate. Dr. Rice looked back and noticed his expression and raised his eyebrows, I don't know what you are nervous about, I said no problem, that is, no problem. Then he turned his head and gave the order to the X-24 in front of him, put the X-23 in the back of the car. As soon as the words fell, the Wolverine replica in front of him, X-24, was like a sculpture, deaf to his orders, motionless. Click. Seeing this scene, 
the person in charge of security behind him subconsciously put his hand on the gun on his waist. The other security personnel also raised their rifles, dark and cold muzzles, and aimed them at the X-24 in unison. And the expression on Dr. Rice's face was also a little unbearable, and his words showed a little anger. X-24. I command you. Put the X-23 in the back of the car. He snapped. Dr. Rice, as well as the people at the GMO Institute, were completely unaware of the detached villa not far away. Endless was standing behind a second-floor window, an index finger on his temple. His eyes locked on the X-24, his brow furrowed slightly. At the same time, the X-24 in front of the Institute's convoy also made no different movements, frowning slightly. Something is wrong. Dr. Rice, who was on the opposite side, noticed the frown on the other side and his heart tightened, and for no reason he felt a cold breath rushing from the tail vertebrae to the top of his head. However, he didn't have time to make any moves. Burst. Three adamantium claws as cold as ice without the slightest temperature had already entered his abdomen, stained red with blood, and protruded from his lower back. Damn it. A curse flashed in Dr. Rice's mind but unfortunately, he had no time to react. The next moment. The three sharp claws made by adamantium have easily cut through all the flesh, internal organs, and bones from the bottom up. Dr. Rice's entire upper body, neck, and head were instantly cut into five slices of meat by sharp claws. Hot blood, emitting a thick fishy smell, with pieces of internal organs and colorful other liquids flowing to the ground. It all happened between electric light and stone fire, too suddenly. Even the surrounding security guards with guns did not have time to react. Dr. Rice died in front of their eyes. Fuck. The head of security, looking at the scene in front of him, cursed in fear of being struck by lightning picked up the pistol he was holding and shot at the X-24. Boom. Fireworks spit out, and the sub pops out of the chamber. However, the moment X-24 killed Dr. Rice, he dropped Laura in his hand, and his figure turned into an afterimage, easily dodging a shot from the head of security. Do it. The head of security spoke loudly. The surrounding security personnel immediately pulled the trigger in their hands without hesitation. Blah blah. In an instant, countless bullets turned into a dense rain of bullets and tilted out. X-24 killed them. In the single family villa, Endless Syndex finger pointed at his temple, and there was a scarlet murderous intent under his eyes. Standing in front of the security personnel. The X-24 has turned into a fierce beast that is not afraid of death. Unexpectedly, with most of the bullets, he rushed fiercely towards those security personnel of GMO research, and the sharp claws on his left and right hands flashed coldly. Cut through the air. It also crossed the bodies of security personnel. In the face of cloned experimental subjects made from the Wolverine gene, these people simply did not have any power to fight back. For a time, the heart-wrenching screams were incessant. The stump broke its arm and flew around. Even the ground was soaked into a muddy exude hot breath by a huge amount of blood. However, within a dozen roars sucking, several security personnel had all collapsed, and none of them were intact. X-24 the only one bathed in blood, stands on top of a pile of corpses. God. What's going on? It just so happens that at the moment. There was a sound of hurried footsteps in the distance. It was Logan Hallett who rushed back in advance, and when he saw the figure standing on the corpse, it looked exactly like himself. He froze in place, his eyes revealing disbelief. 
roar. The cool night breeze blows by, the muddy soil stained bright red with blood, and the rising heat is blown away by the wind. Covered in plasma and riddled with bullet holes, the X-24 stood between various stumps and broken arms and pieces of visceral flesh. Calmly looked back at Logan. Logan Howlett frowned, his gaze flickering and his spine tightening. When he saw the X-24, he immediately realized that the other party was a clone cloned by the AKLI Institute of Transgenic Research, using his genes. This bunch of scum. Logan Howlett cursed secretly, but X-24 seemed to have lost control just now and actually killed all the people of the AKLI Genetic Research Institute. He is now only worried about Charles and them, and does not know if there is an accident. At this time, Laura's petite figure slowly walked out from behind the car full of bullet holes. Hey, Laura, get away. Logan Howlett saw Laura's pupils constricted, afraid that X-24 would hurt him, and immediately shouted nervously. It's just that Laura didn't seem to hear it, and looked at X-24 with a curious look. Right at this moment. X-24 also made a bizarre move, he raised his steel claws. And then. Burst. The steel claws hung full of plasma actually penetrated his own skull directly. Poof. With the sound of the X-24 corpse falling to the ground, Logan Howlett froze in place, he was ready to attack, and the opposite side made a strange move. What's going on? At this time, his afterglow noticed Endless who jumped from the window of the detached villa. Endless, you did this. Logan Hallett reacted immediately, and the strange scene just now may be related to him. Yes. Endless came over and did not continue to hide it, and said bluntly, I just found that I have a different ability, and I have newly excavated an ability. Mind manipulation. Logan Howlett was stunned for a moment, thinking that what happened just now was all related to the ability of the mind. A long time ago, when I was at Xavier Academy, Charles once said that some mutant with extraordinary abilities can have a second awakening situation the day after tomorrow. Ability to have multiple variants at the same time. Logan wondered if he needed the professor to examine Endless's body, after all. The latter had worked at Xavier Academy for many years and had contacted countless mutants. Can help Endless develop and control his own variant ability. Now that mutant is facing extinction, he hopes that Endless can control his powers so that he can survive. At the moment Farm Will is back, Will who has lived on a southern farm all his life, and has not seen any wind or waves when he gets the broken bones all over the place in front of him. Suddenly, his face turned pale and bloodless, and he trembled and took a few steps back, God, what happened here? Seeing this, Endless stretched out his finger and pointed at his temple and said slowly, There are no corpses in front of you, nothing happens at your door. I saw that Will, who was originally panicked, immediately eased his expression and returned to calm, as if he had not seen a bloody scene. He looked at Logan gratefully and smiled, Are you waiting for me, it's thanks to Logan that I drove them away just now. A show of hands. Endless said nonchalantly. Laura next to her glanced at Endless, then at the farmer, and walked to the single family villa with a hitch. And Logan Howlett who was standing in place, couldn't help but complain, this disgusting ability. When he was young, Charles also had self-control, and often did what Endless does now. He has experienced it many times, and he can be said to have suffered from it. Endless, who was on the side, smiled, Wolverine, unless you can think of a better way, you can avoid a lot of trouble by doing so. As long as you don't use it on me, it's fine. Logan Howlett didn't care, picking up the gun that fell on the ground, 
we should deal with it here, otherwise we will definitely be targeted by the people of the Federal Bureau. Will on the side was affected by the psychic ability, as if he could not hear their conversation and turned to walk towards the back. Then Endless and Logan Howlett simply buried all the corpses on the ground so as not to be targeted by the Federal Bureau, and now America and even the whole world are very resistant to mutant, and ordinary people may not have realized the threat of mutant before. After years of publicity, mutant has gradually become a freak in the eyes of countless people. After processing the scene, Logan felt that the GMO Institute would not come to the door for a while. So he also went back to his room to rest, after driving for so long, he was already physically and mentally tired, and then he might drive all the way to Canada without accident. And Endless came to the farm's warehouse alone, and the space in front of him instantly twisted and folded when he reached out. Then a spatial crack leading to DC Gotham was torn out. DC Gotham Under the ink-soaked night, black is the main tone of Gotham City, like an uneven black curtain, dotted with lights like stars. From above, you can see the most prosperous high-rise buildings, as well as the dirtiest narrow laneways. Bruce Wayne, dressed in a black bat battle suit stands on the roof of a residential building, looking down at the street that is now plunged into darkness. Raw. The cool night breeze of the late night blew his black cloak. Under the mask, Bruce. Wayne frowned slightly, as if thinking about something. Birthday boy, Riddler, Joker, what a crazy Gotham, endless. And more and more girls disappear on birthdays. His face became more and more solemn and he muttered, and his mind flashed through the successive cases of missing girls in recent days. In recent days, he has been pursuing this case, but it seems that someone has been obstructing behind it, making the already confusing truth even more ambiguous. However, under his investigation in the past few days, he still grasped some clues. It was a guy code named Birthday Boy who was committing the crime. The night became deeper and deeper, thanks to the shock of the twenty or so corpses in the previous two days, the rats hiding in the sewer stopped a lot, and even the gangster side was surprisingly quiet. Bruce could have put better energy into this case. Birthday Boy, why on earth are you attacking those girls? He was constantly in his thoughts summing up the clues he had gathered, trying to find some cobweb horse traces in the fog. At this time, a sound suddenly came out of thin air behind him, and Bruce heard the reputation and found that it was Endless who appeared at an unknown time. It seems that you like to appear quietly. Bruce still maintained a gloomy tone after changing his voice, but the corners of his mouth outlined under the mask betrayed his mood. Bruce, I hope you found what I was looking for. Endless smiled and saw Bruce's reaction to find Clark's file with a high probability. Sure enough, Bruce took out the file materials that had been prepared long ago, handed them over and said in a deep voice, I hope you don't disappoint me. As long as I get what I want, you will naturally not be disappointed. Endless took the file and the top was placed by Brewster, so he flipped through a few times and found Dakello's file. After a simple look, I found the address of Dakello's school in the metropolis. After that, as long as the timing is right, he can get a superb ability. I want the truth. Bruce on the opposite side couldn't wait to say. Back then, the person behind the murder of your parents was such a Gotham mayor. Copote. Endless didn't sell the Guernsey, Z, said. Copote. Bruce was startled at first, the dazedness in his eyes gradually cleared, and his face was gloomy and self-deprecating, I should have thought of him a long time ago, when his father ran for mayor of Gotham, Copote was his biggest opponent. He got the identity of the real murderer and pondered in his mind how to solve Copote. 
Bruce took a deep breath, thank you. Happy deal. When Endless heard this, he thought that the young man was quite polite, and when he grew up in the later stage, he was expected to choose to subdue his opponent. Ah! Right at this moment. A mournful and sharp scream suddenly resounded from the street not far away, cutting through the quiet night sky. Something happened. Bruston's face froze. Although he has now obtained the truth of that year, he is not ready to give up his work as a vigilante. Immediately took a step, rushed in the direction from which the sound came. As for Endless in the back, he thought about it for a while and chose to follow. It was too late by this time and there was certainly not enough time to find Clark. Kent, after all, Gotham is too far from the metropolis, and there is a Star City in between. Perhaps, I should go to Star City to find the Flash and take the ability of the Speed Force, otherwise it will be too troublesome to act. Endless muttered to himself, turned and jumped up and jumped towards the opposite building keeping up with Batman. Soon the two arrived in front of an abandoned building with an old-fashioned car parked in front of it, and the exhaust pipe at the rear still emitted white smoke, apparently someone had arrived first. This building has been abandoned for a long time. Bruce Wayne looked up, walked over and pushed open the hidden door, a little dust spilling over his head. The hole behind the door was extremely dark. Furniture was scattered on the floor, and shards of glass everywhere made a creaking sound when stepping on the threshold that had fallen into disrepair. Batman Just as the two walked into the hall, a light shone around the corner. Stop! Batman Around the corner, Gordon walked out with a flashlight in hand, the expression on his face cloudy and gloomy that it almost dripped. Gordon what happened? Bruce Wayne wondered. Hearing this, Gordon glanced at the two in front of him. Although he was surprised that Batman would bring a yellow-skinned boy here, he did not link Endless to the gangster tragedy the day before yesterday. After all, the thin image of the other party is completely unrelated to the murderer. What's more, it was a guy who slaughtered more than two dozen people in the gangster and he wasn't in the mood to think about anything else right now, birthday boy, take my daughter away. It's him again. When Bruce heard the familiar name, danger flashed under his eyes. It seems that he likes to attack girls, what clues do you have? Endless has known about the birthday boy, and has previously appeared in the Batman comics, and is a typical perverted murderer of Gotham. Picking out young girls is simply a criminal talent in Gotham. But for such people. Endless was naturally disgusted in his heart. Bang. At this time, there was a loud noise from the dark and narrow staircase, as if someone was smashing the muffled sound of objects. There is movement, go up and take a look. Gordon was anxious and didn't say more, turned and walked upstairs and Endless at the back seemed to have heard some unusual sounds. Pedaling. In the dim stairway, the three of them rushed up to the second floor, and the sound of hurried footsteps echoed. The flashlight in Gordon's hand shook from running, his face was eager and fierce, and he gritted his teeth, I swear, if something happens to Barbara, I will screw this damn guy's head off. When the three of them rushed to the second floor, the strange noise that came from the upper floor also disappeared, and they hurriedly stopped, and the dust that had been deposited on the ground was stirred. The upstairs rooms were empty, except for a huge amount of mirrors inlaid on one wall, but it was as thick as the four rotating walls. No one. Bruce Wayne looked around and warily explored the surrounding rooms, only until he had seen them all. Nor did I find anything wrong. Gordon found nothing on his side, and he searched every corner for only scattered bricks and stones, and the rancid stench in the air. No way, I got the news from that guy, 
he's here. Gordon's face was solemn, and he had previously learned the whereabouts of the birthday boy from a gang member. Bruce Wayne was silent and began to look around. At this time, Endless came to the huge mirror that occupied most of the wall, leaned over and picked up a brick and smashed it out. Bang! Whoosh! The huge amount of mirror burst open in an instant, turning into countless fragments reflecting bright light, and Ding Zero fell to the ground with a bang. The sound also attracted the attention of Bruce and the two, and when they turned their heads to look at it, they saw a heavy iron door exposed on the wall that had been hidden behind them. Bruce and Gordon looked at Endless in surprise, they didn't see the slightest problem in the mirror. The main thing is that it is full of dust, and it looks like it has not been moved recently. How did you find out? Gordon asked suspiciously. I hear very well. Endless casually explained, reaching out to try to pull the door, finding that the iron door was tightly locked, and immediately raised his foot without hesitation. Boom. Huge amounts of collision, the iron door in front of Endless opened in response. On the fake it, there was even a twisted footprint. Gordon was stunned when he saw this scene swallowed a mouthful of spit with difficulty, and the one finger wide iron door said kick and kick. Batman, where did you find your helper? He looked at the yellow-skinned boy's slightly thin body, and his eyes shook. Unfamiliar. Bruce was no longer willing to say more, picked up the flying darts and looked at the room inside warily. Oh. A sound of the girl whimpering and crying came out. A party house. Endless saw the layout of the room and couldn't help but raise his eyebrows. This slightly larger room is decorated with light balls to reflect the space and a table with birthday cakes in the middle. Directly opposite the wall was a banner with the words Happy Birthday. Someone. Bruce narrowed his eyes and walked towards the strange room in front of him. The closer he got to the choked person, the greater the movement. Soon I saw a girl curled up in a corner, her shoulders constantly shaking, crying. The girl's face was covered with tears, her face was distorted after experiencing a lot of fright, and she struggled frantically when she saw someone come in. Barbara. Gordon, who came in later, saw the girl's face clearly, found that it was his daughter and rushed towards the other party nervously. Unaware. As he passed a corner, a tall figure slowly raised the kit endless knife in his hand and slashed at him with all his might. Gordon be careful. Bruce stared at him and reminded loudly. Gordon also reacted, looking back, his pupils suddenly shrank. The kit endless knife in the tall figure's hand had already slashed towards him and the blade with a cold light was reflected in his eyes, rapidly becoming larger. The next moment, a black shadow flashed before Gordon's eyes. Clang! With the sound of metal clashing, Bruce was already in front of him between the electric light and stone fire, and blocked the slash with his bracer. The huge figure, seeing that his attack was blocked, roared angrily, Damn bat! Before the words fell, he had already abandoned the kit endless knife in his hand, took Bruce in his arms, broke through the wall and jumped downstairs. Bang! Countless bricks and stones splashed, and a large hole was knocked out of the wall. With the sound of heavy objects falling to the ground, the two sides have smashed into the road outside the abandoned building, raising endless dust and fog. Damn it! Bruce fell in tearing pain like his internal organs, cursed secretly, and struggled to get up. At the same time, looking back at the huge guy lying at his feet, his face wrapped in a yellow hood, he had also determined the identity of the other party. Birthday boy. I've been tracking you down for so long, I won't let you go. Bruce endured the tumbling in his chest and abdomen gritting his teeth and thinking. 
Unexpectedly, before he could stand firmly, a big hand had already grasped his calf and suddenly pulled back. Bang! Bruce smashed directly on the ground facing the ground, and the birthday boy next to him took advantage of this gap to raise his big foot and slam down on him. Rumble! But the birthday boy stepped on the air, and the ground under his feet trembled violently. Bruce rolled to the side a few times before standing up slightly embarrassed, and the young man was not very experienced in combat, resulting in multiple mistakes. Next second. The birthday boy roared angrily, did not do much nonsense, and directly punched him. Bruce barely parried. The two sides entangled for several rounds, and the latter was always downwind due to the superiority of the opponent's power, coupled with Bruce's previous fall from a tall building and injury. Ultimately, Bruce was accidentally hit in the head with a punch, groggy and incapacitated, and was grabbed by the neck and pressed against the wall. Inside an abandoned building, Gordon knocked out the hole in the second floor wall and was anxious to see this scene, he reached his waist only to find that the gun had landed on the car. Right at this moment, Endless next to him walked over slowly, leaned over to pick up the kit Endless knife that had been left by the birthday boy before, and threw it out forcefully. Swish! The blade cut through the air, flashed a cold light, and had already crossed a distance of more than 10 meters in an instant. The blade body buzzed, snorted, and cut half of the birthday boy's head diagonally, and suddenly blood splattered like a fountain. Airplanes. Laugh at. The blade of the blade carried a huge impact with a cold light, and the gusts of wind surged through the air. In the blink of an eye, the blade of the cold light directly cut off the head of the birthday boy, and endless blood splashed like a fountain and the hot blood soaked the dirt on the ground. The blade containing Yu Wei was fiercely inserted into the ground due to inertia before stopping. Bruce Wayne looked at the huge figure that suddenly froze, and a line of blood spread across his face. Subsequently, the birthday boy exposed half of his brain and smashed down to the ground with a muffled echo in the silent street. The blood sprayed at the break was steaming, and the viscous blood flowed all over his body, leaving a pool of blood on the ground under his feet. Bang! In the next second, huge amounts of body overwhelmed Bruce's body. Ahem! Bruce struggled to crawl out from under the corpse and couldn't stop coughing loudly. Gordon in the building saw such a stunned scene, and then looked back at Endless beside him with shock. For a long time, he realized with hindsight that the thin boy who came with Batman in front of him was most likely the murderer of the gangster. Barbara. Realizing this, Gordon quietly pulled his daughter with a complicated face and took a few steps back. Barbara, who was already immersed in fear, the fear on her face has not faded, and now seeing such a bloody scene, her weak heart was greatly hit standing in place and letting her father pull. Downstairs, Bruce also recovered some form, looking at the miserable birthday boy on the ground, and the whole kit endless knife that had sunk into the ground. I couldn't help but scold secretly, this freak. Endless didn't care about their reaction, but looked at the entrance of the basement and said in a deep voice, you better go to the basement to have a look. I smell a strange smell in the basement. You're not supposed to be a werewolf, are you? Bruce Wayne was speechless, thinking of his brutal fighting style, which seemed reasonable. Thinking, he came to the door of the basement and kicked the rusty iron door open. He did not question Endless, after all, if the other party wanted to do it, there was no need to use tricks at all. Bang! After the iron door was kicked open, a burst of dust was raised. The Gordon and his daughter also came over, watching the entrance to the basement warily. You better be prepared. 
Endless followed, and said slowly with a slight anger between his eyebrows. Hearsay. The three of them immediately realized that there might be something below that made them subvert the three views, in fact, they had already guessed. Click. Bruce Wayne in front walked down first, and as soon as he got closer, an indescribable stench came to his face. The Gordon father and daughter were so smoked by this smell that their stomachs turned into the sea. Endless in the back took protective measures in advance and wore a mask to avoid the stench that hit. Fuck. Bruce covered his mouth and nose to endure the stench, walked inside the door, and turned on the basement light. Syllable. The lights come on, dispelling the darkness. The brightness for a while made them squint, but when they saw the scene in front of them, their expressions instantly froze. Ah. Uh. Barbara let out a strange cry from her mouth, covered her eyes, and her body trembled uncontrollably. This damn beast. Gordon's body trembled and his eyes were fierce, and he cursed loudly. In the basement of the abandoned building, under the illumination of the light, the bodies of countless girls were piled up there, because of the number of piles they could not count, some were just a mountain of corpses. Rowie's endless face was suddenly cold when he read the comic and was mentally prepared. After all, in comics, it's just pictures. And only a small part of the painting is made, far less impactful than witnessing the scene. Endless narrowed his eyes and swept over the pile of corpses in front of him, all of which were covered with scars and rarely intact. The girl who was crushed under the pile of corpses is estimated to be the first to be killed. The whole pile of corpses, the more you go below, the higher the degree of corruption of the corpses, and the grey and yellow sap of decay continues to flow out from between the piles. It's hell on earth. I. I'll let someone from the police department handle this. Gordon was silent for a long time and said slowly. His tone was full of self-reproach, and the entire Gotham Police Department was involved in this matter, because no one would ever deal with the birthday boy. It's just that the behind-the-scenes black gestures standing behind him are huge. Now let's go out first. Endless glanced at Barbara, who was crouched on the ground and close to collapse. Only then did Gordon react and appease Barbara a few words. Several people then left the basement of the abandoned building and went outside. The expressions on everyone's faces facing the night wind looked a little solemn, and the picture they just saw in the basement still lingered. Gordon, how much do you know about birthday boys? Bruce asked Gordon in a serious tone. Gordon took a deep breath and his eyes were complicated. My subordinates took the file of the murder case of the Waynes couple in the archives. Then, tonight my daughter was abducted here by the birthday boy. Well, it seems that there is a reason why the Gotham police rarely care about super criminals. Endless is indeed not being sarcastic about Gordon. The reason why this police detective ignored the super criminals in Gotham was that he was worried that his daughter would be implicated, and as a result, the righteous subordinates actually wanted to investigate the matter. Bruce. After listening to it, Wayne's eyes were gloomy to the extreme. Apparently. This matter is inseparable from Copote. I know what to do. He left such a sentence and then raised his hand and shot a grappling hook at the surrounding tall buildings, and the rope was tightened and lifted off the ground. Then, it disappeared into the thick night. You. Gordon watched Batman leave, looked at Endless, and stopped talking. He knew that the man in front of him was an extremely dangerous guy. I should go too. Endless said casually. Now that Batman is gone, there's no need for him to linger any longer. After leaving Gordon's line of sight, he uses dimensional teleportation and returns to the world of Marvel. 
Tomorrow it's time to go to the metropolis to find Dakello, but I don't know if the dimensional teleportation can be accurately located. Endless walked towards the Weir family's single-family villa, and suddenly thought that dimensional teleportation also has the ability to teleport, but he can't accurately teleport to the specified location. Unless you remember the coordinates, you can transmit accurately. That's why it's randomly teleported to Gotham. At the moment, the bustling Washington of the United States. A towering building stands out from the surrounding buildings. This is S-H-I-E-L-D in the loose wing building. Even at night, the building is still brightly lit. Inside it is an office near the top floor. Current S.H.I.E.L.D. Director, Nick. Fury, looking at the picture on the monitor in front of him, his dark brows furrowed. He kept touching the top of his egg-like head with his hand, and his expression became more and more gloomy and solemn. The content on the screen is the scene where Charles lost control of the hotel that day, and everyone within a radius of 10 kilometers lost his ability because of his sudden outburst of ability. Charles. I didn't expect you to be alive. Nick. Fury's fingertips tapped lightly on the top of his smooth head, muttering with a serious expression. The disaster caused by Charles getting out of control is still fresh in retrospect. For the mutant, who was labeled extremely dangerous, even after disappearing for several years, S.H.I.E.L.D. was still doing security work against him. His reappearance today has caused such a significant impact that it is not up to Nick. Fury took it so seriously. Right in Nick. Fury was lost in thought. The picture on the monitor jumped, but it jumped to a yellow-skinned teenager with a thin body. This person is naturally endless. In the picture, Endless walked slowly towards the interior of the hotel, then tapped his finger on his temple, and then only saw a few seconds. Charles, who had been raging before, gradually calmed down. Seeing this scene, Nick. Fury's expression became more serious and he couldn't help but sit up straight, his eyes narrowed slightly. At this time, the screen on the monitor switches again came to the wilderness. The protagonist in the picture is still endless. It's just that this time his head was pierced and he fell to the ground and lost his breath. Time passed a few raw sucking, the teenager with bullet holes on his body, actually stood up again, the bullet shot out of the body, and the wound healed quickly. This guy. Nick. With years of experience as an agent, Fury immediately noticed something different. Because of the teenager on the screen, the abilities displayed are all related to the people around them. He was able to replicate other people's variants of ability. Realizing this, he excitedly took out his cell phone and dialed Phil Coulson's number, Phil Coulson, go check this guy's whereabouts. The voice is over. He transmitted Endless photo to the other party. Do it all. The super agent sat in a chair with his eyes flickering. The other side. In the office of the president of the security council on the top floor of the tricurved wing building. Hydra's leader within SHIELD, Pierce, also received at the same time received from Nick. Fury's message. An eager expression appeared on his face. Quickly summoned his subordinates, crossbones, and said with a solemn face, This yellow-skinned boy is a little strange. You have to catch Phil Coulson before he does. When crossbones received the order, he answered and quickly left the tricurved wing building. Pierce sat in his seat, lost in thought. He had a hunch. This yellow-skinned boy will bring huge amounts of influence to the world. As the undercurrent surged on all sides, night soon fell. It was the second day, and it was not yet dawn. 
Endless and the others embarked on the journey to California again. Charles sat in the back row, his cloudy eyes looking out the window, feeling a little down. Laura has been fiddling with the Walkman that will gave her son. Large pickups sped down the highway, and the surrounding scene kept receding. Charles remembered the memory of last night's dream, and looked at Logan on the co-pilot, his tone low and unconcealable sadness, you should have told me earlier, Logan. I hurt so many people. What you've been doing is right, and I'm starting to understand you. When Logan in front heard this, he was stunned for a moment, then looked back and smiled, it's all gone, Professor. Endless, who was driving, did not look back. He knew that last night Charles had dreamed of the past, remembering the fact that he had erased the grief of the X-Men because he was out of control. Laura's ears were still stuffed with headphones for the Walkman. I don't seem to be very interested in talking to the outside world. Then. The car drove to a gas station next to the road, and Endless slowly stopped the car. Guys, I think we should fill up the car and take a break. I'm okay. Logan glanced at Charles, who was silent, and said with a sigh. Get away. Two dirty things. There is nothing for you to eat here. How dare to step on the floor I just mopped dirty. What a damn. As soon as Endless got out of the car, he heard cursing from the convenience store, and then he saw two thin figures being pushed out. After the two thin figures were pushed out, they had to curl up in the corner and shiver because of the cold wind blowing. Is that Wanda and Pete? When Endless saw the two people who came out, surprise flashed under his eyes. It's just that at the moment they look very immature. But. Wanda is surprisingly well developed, much plumper than her peers, and her facial features are delicate, if not for the shabby clothes on her body and the mud on her face. It can even be mistaken for a rich girl. Perhaps, the Wanda and Pete of this universe have nothing to do with Magneto. Endless guest. After all. The X-Men and mutant brotherhood of this world have long been gone, and it is impossible for the immature two to have anything to do with Magneto, who has been dead for many years. Thinking. He walked over to the Wanda siblings, who were curled up in the corner. After all, one of the purposes of coming to Marvel is not to. That's it guys hope you like this video. Like share and subscribe the channel if you want more videos like this. Also tell me in the comment section down below if you have any recommendation about what I should make next. Thanks for watching.